I will continue from where I stopped in the previous class. The nuts vendor blew out his flare and rose to go home. This was a signal for the astrologer to bundle up too, since it left him in darkness except for a little shaft of green light which strayed in from somewhere and touched the ground before him. In the previous class, I had already introduced you to the astrologer who would start his business at midday and close as soon as the grounded selling man would close his shop. Now, why is th this? What is the reason for this? The reason is that the astrologer did not have a lamp of his own, so he would depend on the lights that came from the other shopkeepers. So his main source of light was the peanut selling man. So as soon as the peanut selling man packs up and closes his shop, that means he too has to go, has to leave. Okay. So this particular evening also, the nuts vendor blew off his lamp okay, and was ready to go home. So this was a signal that the astrologer too had to pack up and go. So as he was getting ready, let's see what happened. He picked up his cowrie shells and paraphernalia. Paraphernalia are simply um, instruments. Okay, He picked up his uh, instruments and was putting them back into his bag when the green shaft of light was blotted out. He looked up and saw a man standing before him. Okay, so just as he was about to leave, he looked up and saw someone. He saw a man standing in front of him. He sensed a possible client and said, You look so careworn. It will do you good to sit down for a while and chat with me. Okay, so he thought that this person is a customer. So he spoke to him and said, You look so troubled. Let us sit together. Let us chat for some time. So the other man, you know, grumbled. He murmured some words that cannot be understood. But he sat down. The astrologer pressed his invitation, whereupon the other thrust his palm under his nose, saying, You call yourself an astrologer? The astrologer felt challenged and said, tilting the other's palm towards the green shaft of light, Yours is nature. Oh, stop that, the other said. Tell me something worthwhile. Okay, so the astrologer tried to make more money that particular evening by stopping this man and telling him to sit down, okay? So the man said unwillingly, and he even made fun of this astrologer saying, Oh, you call yourself an astrologer. So the astrologer was not happy. So the man said, you tell me something, okay? Tell me something meaningful. Friend felt picked. I charge only three pies per question, and what you get ought to be good enough for your money. And this, the other three withdrew his arm, took out an anna, and flung it out to him, saying, I have some questions to ask. If I prove you are bluffing, you must return the anna to me with interest. If you find my answers satisfactory, will you give me five rupees? No. Or will you give me eight annas? All right provided you give me twice as much if you are wrong, said the stranger. The astrologer was angry. He felt humiliated at how the stranger was dealing with him. He said, I charge only three pies per question and you are expecting big answers, okay? So the astrologer said, you get just enough for three pies, not more than that. Hearing this, the stranger took out and Anna, he took out an Anna coin and flung it to him, threw it towards him and said, I have some questions to ask. If I prove you are bluffing, if you are bluffing, you must return the Anna to me with interest, he said. And the astrologer said, well, if you find my answers good or satisfactory, will you give me five rupees? Hearing this, the stranger said, No, I will not give you five rupees. Then the astrologer said, Or will you give me eight annas? 
So the stranger said, All right, but you have to promise to give me 16 annas, okay, twice as much if you are wrong. So with this, the pact was accepted after a little argument. Then the astrologer sent up prayers to the heaven as the other lit a cherud. The astrologer was very nervous, so he began to pray. But this man, the stranger, was very relaxed. He was smoking a cigar. The astrologer caught a glimpse of his face by the match light. There was a pause as cars hooted on the road. Jutka drivers swore at their horses and the bubbles of the crowd agitated the semi-darkness of the park. So the noise in the park made the astrologer more nervous. Okay, He could not concentrate. The other sat down, sucking his cheroot, puffing out, sat there rootlessly. The astrologer felt very uncomfortable. So the stranger was there, sitting next to the astrologer, very relaxed, smoking his cigar. Meanwhile, the astrologer was just the opposite. He was very nervous. He, he kept praying to God, asking God to help him, to help him give the right answer to this man. Otherwise, he would have to lose all his money. The astrologer felt very uncomfortable. So he said, here, take your Anna back. I am not used to such challenges. It is late for me today. He made preparations to bundle up. So suddenly he stood up and said, Here, take your Anna bag. I don't want to do any challenges. And it is also late for me today. So he bundled up his stuff and was preparing to leave. Just then this man held his wrist and said, you can't get out of it now. You dragged me in while I was passing. So this man, hearing this, said to the astrologer, You are the one who stopped me as I was walking. Now you are planning to leave? You cannot do this, okay? So he held him, holding his wrist, and this made the astrologer very, very nervous. Okay, The astrologer shivered in his grip. And his voice shook and became faint. Leave me today. I will speak to you tomorrow. Okay, he still tried to get away. He said, please leave me. I will speak to you tomorrow. The other thrust his palm in his face and said, challenge is challenge. Go on. The astrologer proceeded with his throat drying up. There is a woman. So the astrologer had no way to escape. So he tried his best to give this man the right answer. Then the man said, Stop! I don't want all that. Shall I succeed in my present search or not? He said. Okay. So what is the main thing here? What did the stranger want to know? What did he want to know? He asked the astrologer if he will succeed in whatever thing he was searching for. Here he did not say what he is searching for. So he wants the astrologer to tell him if he will be successful in what he is looking for. So he said, answer this and go. Otherwise, I will not let you go till you disgorge all, incant all your coins. The astrologer muttered a few incantations, so the astrologer prayed again and said, All right, I will speak. But will you give me a rupee if what I say is convincing? Otherwise, I will not open my mouth and you may do what you like. Okay, so the astrologer finally said, All right, I will try my best to answer you, but promise you will give me a rupee. So after some argument, okay, the man was ready to give him a rupee. After a good deal of haggling, the other agreed. We will pause here for today. And so far from what we had done today, the important questions are like, um, whom did the astrologer meet 
as he was closing his shop what did the man want what did the stranger want okay and the conversation between the two regarding the amount of money they had to pay each other this is very important so we will finish off the lesson in the next class